Hi there, wonderful awakening beings and spiritual souls. Joe Rose of JoeRose.com, numerologist and energy forecaster. In this video, I'm sharing with you the forecast for May 2020. Just before I do, let's recap what 2020 has in store for us. It's a four energy. How do I know this? By adding together and reducing down all the digits of the current year. 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 equals 4. So what does the 4 bring to us? In a short, sharp burst, it brings on the, on the positive, on the strength side, it brings structure, stability, planning. It's a slow moving energy, steady as she goes one step at a time. It's a number of building, whether that be the foundations or systems. It's also a very loyal energy, the four, and if you overdo it in the four, there is chances that you can become sick, poorly, burnt out, run down. I do have a video on 2020, so do go and check that in the link below or in the info bar that runs along the top. Now, some of you have told me you don't know about this info bar. Just go into your YouTube account and tag on the info section and you'll find, not just for my videos, but for everybody's videos, that they often put information videos in the link above. Coming on back. So there is always a flip side of the energy and in the past I've not necessarily delved in with it, although I've said there may be challenges that come up and that's exactly what they are. They are challenges and they can go from minor to major. So the flip side of the four energy is control, um, rigidity, inflexibility, intolerance, highly critical, even rebellious. Now I want you to just absorb some of these words that I am sharing with you right now. We are what we think. Now, I used to love the Gillian McKeith uh, series, We Are What We Eat, but literally, we do eat our own words. I mean, they come from our mouth, they're up there in our head, and we need to understand this. Now, I don't know where it goes, science or, or research or whatever, you never know what your trust in these days is, but somewhere between 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts run through our mind every day. That's a lot of thoughts. And we are driven by our thoughts. What we focus on expands. So if we think we can or we think we can't, we're perfectly right. And that's why there's always two sides to every story. Are you playing out the victim or the creator? Because it takes the creator to get out of victim. I was reminded today while watching some videos of a book, um, As a Man Thinketh, by James Allen. And it shares, or just to catch it in a phrase, the body is a slave to the mind. In my previous video, Power Versus Force, I shared with you a chart, and I'll leave it here for you to take a look at as well, but I shared with you a chart from a book, Power Versus Force, written by David R. Hawkins. As you can see, fear is near the bottom. It's marked at an energy level, or at a level, should I say, of 100. Now, how did they mark these levels? So they did it using kinesiology, and I want you to remember that because I'm gonna come back to that towards the end of the video. But fear was given 100, and it's so much easier as much as it doesn't feel like it, but it's so much easier to live in fear, to be in the fear-based lower energies. I mean, just look at the chart and see those kind of energies. See where you are fluctuating on a regular basis. See where you occasionally get up to and see what is making you come back down again. As you can see, at 200, we move into courage. Now, it takes courage to step outside. It takes courage to make a difference. And it takes courage to realize that you are your own source of energy. You are the one that knows your truth. You are the one that needs to find out your answers. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I've been down a rabbit hole these last couple of months while we've been in lockdown. Now, there's a system in place, and that's a system on the side that doesn't feel um, one that's raising us up. The four energy is about limitations. There's endless words that I can add. There's so much about each energy. And the only way I can really share this is if I, if you get involved in a mentorship program, and I'm not necessarily here to bring that to your attention, but I can only give so much in these videos. But four is the number of limitations. You need to learn to turn your limitations into your strengths. With the four being a, a slow energy with a step-by-step -step process, what you need to learn to do is just expand slightly. Once you expand slightly, all of a sudden you can breathe. And isn't it interesting that I use the word breathe, bearing in mind what is going on at the moment with people's health and how we're feeling. Whether it be that we've actually got this virus that's causing us a struggle to breathe, or whether it's we feel like we're being suffocated, trapped in our homes, trapped in this system that I have named a pandemic, and I'm, I'm not the only one I've discovered online that's also given it that name, but to me, I named it that because it's very much a four energy, planning. This hasn't come from nowhere, this has been planned, whatever way, shape or form, whatever part of it, not all of it, some of it is natural because the universe is the first energy. Um, but something has, has brought this situation upon us and we are doing as we're told and, and staying at home. So the four energy is about pushing your boundaries. Now, if you think about pushing your boundaries, even if it was tight around you, then you can breathe a little bit more. You can... <sighs> and we need to take time out. Four is such a doing number, but yet at the same time, it's highly grounded. So get outside and ground yourself. Touch nature let go of whatever your worries are um whether it be financial whether it be health whatever it is just literally let go i attempted to create this video before and i failed i haven't failed the video is still created and it may be that this video is joined with that video for certain parts of it but there was so much going on and I needed to take time out. I needed to take time out so that I could reground myself and find out where I am at the moment. Me personally, look, it's your life, L-Y-F-E. Love yourself first every day. Look, do you like my t-shirts? I know you can't see it totally there, but I'll put a picture up. I printed these t-shirts um, a few years back when I was doing a talk at The Best You in London. And I do have a recording of that talk, and I think I will be sharing it in the very near future with a couple of bits um, added just to help you understand. So it's about loving yourself first. This is not a selfish way to think about it, because when you love yourself, when you are connected, you can then allow it to ooze out and you can see that you too have challenges and so does other people and you can become more accepting on this. Before I get onto the nine energy, I want to share that in January, I said expect change. Look, the numbers never lie. I love numerology. The numbers never lie. I said expect change. Change is the only consistent we have. February, I said responsibility, home and family. Make sure your environment serves you. If you had, you'd be in the right place for this lockdown right now. You'd be able to work on your relationships. And if you hadn't, I'm sure there's been some triggers having you address the place you live, the location, your family, your relationships, and so on. In March, the seven energy, I suggested a number of things, and that was to, to pray, because that's when we ask. But we're too busy with everything in our head, all those thoughts. We need to learn to meditate so that we can receive. The questions I planted was, who am I? And why am I here? You need to own you. I get it's all about we, and this is what's being played on right now, but you cannot be a we until you know you. Take my word, I know this from experience. 
I am a well-read person. I have got near on a thousand books that I read. Forget the fiction ones, a, a thousand. I have been on endless education programs and due to my own ill health of the immune system, I have researched and followed and done. So I'm talking not just from an intellectual knowledge consumed um, perspective, but also from an experiential perspective. During the seven month, I shared with you that it will feel like we've been alone. And at the beginning, I said, perhaps we're being forced to self-isolate or isolate. Only then can you really know who you are. I created a Pinterest uh, graphic somewhere here. I created a Pinterest graphic where I was looking at the word alone and realized when you spaced it out, it became all one. We are all one. Whatever you do affects me and everybody else. Whatever I do affects you and everybody else, as well as the self. And this is what we need to understand, but we have to start with the self first. It's not selfish. They tell you to put your oxygen mask on first on the plane for a reason. Then we moved to um, April and it was an A. And my suggestion was about becoming the CEO of the self, becoming the CEO of you. If you had been stacking this, you would be well prepared to have utilized this lockdown for greater things. Let me move on to May. Now, May's a nine energy. We know this because May's the fifth month and we add it to the four energy of the year. So what does May bring when we look at it from a numerology perspective? It brings endings, conclusions, sensitivity, deep, deep emotions. I mean, they are rising right now, yes? It's about letting go, intuition. At the end, it's really about transformation. It's a humanitarian number, highly compassionate. It's a contributor number. So it often feels like it's a constant service and it needs to be service, but not servitude. It's open-minded and it's a visionary. It also asks you to accept everything as it is, to know that it is as it is in the moment. Now, Forgive me with the flip side here because I may be throwing a few words out there and it's because I'm at the point with what's been going on in my own world is it's time to wake up. I created a video, Mass Awakening. I've said power versus force. I give you this information every month. I've given you your personal years and your life path numbers and I am creating the expression series. But I can only give you so much um, in these videos and everyone, and I honestly tell you, everyone is unique. You were born an original. Don't become a copy. This is not the time to be the sheeple that we've been led to believe. The flip side of the nine. The flip side of the nine brings um, deception, aggression, uh, destruction is a very cold energy um it's a cowardice betrayal it can be heartless seriously heartless vindictive relentless narcissistic i know i'm going on possessive volatile threatening unfair and false how do we know if our world is false well we've got to learn to trust the self the four is a very trusting, loyal number. That's the number of the year. We're constantly building up from this year. And sometimes we have to knock things down, including systems, in order to rebuild. The most important system I can have you focus on right now is your immune system. I have watched many doctors share great insights, whether they be a clin clinical doctor, an immunolo Im immunologist, a, a virologist, or any kinds of ologists and doctors and so on. I have spent endless hours traipsing through the internet looking for solutions, but I already knew them. Because of my own immune system, which is anything from Hashimoto's, Shorgans, fibromyalgia, lupus, um, arthritis, I have many labels given to me, and so I've done my research on this. The immune system is the focus, but what stops the immune system working? 
I created a series last year, the mental health series, and I explained that what happens when we're sick, and think about being sick, you're laid up in bed, you can hardly move. Why? The blood is not on the periphery, it's at the organs, it's at the point of wherever this invader, this alien is in your body, and it wants to make you better. But if a fire took place while you were sick, it doesn't matter about healing the body at the moment because if you're burnt by the fire, you're gone. So you need to get out. So what happens is the blood stops working there and it goes to the peripheral, the arms, the legs, because we want to either fight or flight. Now, what's interesting is the stress hormone is triggered so much in today's world. Again, I share that in the video, but it's triggered so much in today's world. And if you ever think about the butterflies you have in your stomach, that's the flittering of the blood. Which way should it go, in or out? You know, should it get to the, the point of what needs sorting out or should it go out? And that can come anything from stage fright to really being faced with the fire. So understanding your body is key. So you need to work on building your immune system. And that would be sleep, good quality sleep. That would be exercise and not just this walking cycling and riding i'm a swimmer why can't we swim right now what is the difference between this um yes good food vitamins and nutrients but most of all what is your mind telling you i mentioned in in march the seven energy meditate now people say oh joe i don't know how to meditate um i feel like i want to move there's so much going on in my head exactly let go of being in the stillness as you start out. If there's so many things in your head, how can you even sort out the next thing that you want to do? The reason why we meditate is to bring us back to the now and work out what's important. It doesn't matter about the history. It doesn't matter what's gone before. And I know we want to understand and move towards the future. But again, don't worry about that. We can't deal with the future, have it in mind, but we need to deal with the now. We can't wipe the slate clean. We can't get amnesia. Some people do. So we have to accept what's brought us to this point. And when we think about it, in, in the February, I said responsibility, we're all responsible for this. Whether we like it or not, and this may seem hard and I can go into a whole spiel here, but maybe that's for another video. But when we accept responsibility for where we are and how we feel, then we can do something about it. Again, I talk about the movie Inside Out. Inside Out teaches you that no emotion is any better or any stronger than the other. You must deal with the emotions as they come up. So while we've been in this lockdown, have you noticed the chaos? Have you taken responsibility? Have you checked in with your environment, your family? Have you prayed and meditated? Have you asked those questions? Have you become the CEO of you? Are you taking charge? Are you taking control of your own life and your well-being? We're in lockdown. Right now when I create this video, we have no idea how long we're in lockdown. But I know I've done research on the figures, whether it be last year's figures and the amount of deaths in this year, Mm -hmm. there's no different there is still birth we're still going up so what's going on something else and this pushed me down a rabbit hole and when I found myself in this rabbit hole I went through um, various stages but what I got to was cognitive dissident uh, sorry what's the word cognitive dissidence you know we can't accept we've been overloaded with information and we can't accept it Next year is a five energy, and next year is about freedom. At the moment, we are losing freedom of our own life, our own well-being, freedom to choose and freedom to speak. Many people I've followed over the years have been censored over this period of time. You have to ask yourself, why? You have to ask yourself, if you've gone out, what has changed? I've gone out, I shared in a previous video about mum being sick, mum's still sick, mum hasn't been out of bed since she's come home, um, really worried, but they don't want to call the ambulance again because that will separate my mum and her husband. And at the moment, love is keeping them together. Love is keeping them together. We must understand the power of love. In that power versus force, love is at 500. If you can stay, um, 
I don't know, what's the word, you know, hovering around love. You can get to the joy, peace, and then enlightenment. Back to this um, cognitive dissonance. So while I was on my journey, I realized, or it felt like there was such a loss, and then a grief set in. And I want to share with you the five stages of grief. Back in the 1960s, a psychiatrist called Elizabeth Kubler-Ross spent time observing her patients and how they acted out their own terminal diagnosis. Everything is energy. Everything. Now, grief happens because we've had a loss. Now, loss could be a loss of life, a loved one has passed away. It can also be a loss within a relationship, a separation, a divorce, or something coming, a friend walking away, someone turning their back. Um, but there is a, a loss there. It could be a loss of pets or plants. It can be a loss of material things, you know, the somethings in your life. It can be a loss of a belief, direction, control. They're all forms of loss and they will all work through the five stages of grief. Not necessarily all for every loss, but and not in any particular order. And you may go in and out of some before you get to others. Let me share with you these five stages. They're in no particular order, as I said, but I'm going to uh, number them one to five. So one is denial. Denial is a refusal to believe loss is real and the brain is choosing to protect itself until it has enough information to process. Number two is anger. Now anger often comes after we comprehend the loss. We look to find targets for this loss and this can bring us anywhere between frustration and fury. Three, bargaining. Here's where we attempt to strike a deal with ourselves or higher source. We're doing this to cope with the pain. We're moving to doing because the being, we feel the pain. When we're doing, we don't feel. At this point, um, guilt can be triggered. And this is when a whole bunch of what ifs can come up. Number four is depression. We realize that loss has happened. Life has changed. It cannot go back. Life has changed. Regrets and voids. We can't go back to the past and often the past can feel like a lie. The future's gone. We don't know where we're going. Back to loss, loss of direction. There's, it's, it's always going round. Everything is energy. It's always moving. The fifth one is acceptance. We understand it's happened. It can't be changed. Here's when we can start to move forward. Now, this could be a point where we move forward and we don't go back, but we can still go back because every time we find out something, it's like another level and another level. So the five stages of grief I've put there. Now, I want to share the nine is about letting go. So we may find certain systems crumbling. I am praying that it's not the immune system. I am praying it's not family. And I am praying that the nine knocks down the system that's destroying us right now. I am praying that the nine allows us to let go, to conclude. But most importantly, it allows us to forgive. Because when you understand um, this cognitive dissidence, and where we're going with what's going on, you start to question what you've done in your lifetime. And I questioned myself severely with regards to my children. I have three children with X amount of challenges. And having watched the documentary, The Truth About Vaccines 2020, I realised that perhaps some of those challenges that my children have would never have happened if I hadn't given them the vaccine. And that made me think, excuse me, because I will get emotional here, that made me think 
they would have been better off if I hadn't been alive. I get they wouldn't have been born if I hadn't been alive, but that was a thought that come through. And this is why I've shared the five stages of grief. What I want to ask you here is, would you like to know how to find out the truth? People say to me, I don't know what to believe anymore. And I don't know what to believe anymore. I said to you, the way they did the levels in power versus false was um, to use kinesiology. Now, kinesiology, when you often see it, it's the arm is out and another person will come along and they will put pressure on the arm or further down somewhere uh, in order to do that. But you don't always walk along with a pair, and especially at the moment when we're, when we're in social distancing. So th the way I do it is I use my finger and thumb. Kinesiology can work with any part of your body. Um, and if you learn to know and if you're grounded and you meditate more that you, you've got a space between the breath or the thoughts, you can find the answers. But I do this. Another way of doing it, if this doesn't work, I will explain after. But I use my finger and thumb. Why? Because it's always with me 24-7 every week of the year. And so because I was never confident in the beginning and I struggled to make decisions, which I shared in one of my videos earlier this year, is um, you hold it together. It doesn't matter how tight this is. Right, so hold it together like this. And I ask myself, is my name Joe? So is my name Joe? And for me, it doesn't go through. Now for you, it might go through. Just note what it does when you're asking a question you know to be true. That's what we're looking for, a, something we know to be true, just to calibrate. Then I ask, is my name Sheila? So is my name Sheila? It doesn't matter. Sheila? Sheila, right? It doesn't matter. Now, my daughter says, Mum, this doesn't work for her. And I say, you have to believe it will work. You have to believe you are connected to source. We are connected to source. I then ask the question, am I aligned to my soul? So am I aligned to my soul? Yes. Very rarely am I not. And that's because I'm flapping around about something and I need to stop and bring myself back in the moment. I need to let my soul realign with me. My daughter still can't get this, but when she has a question, she must trust it somewhere because she asks me if I can do that. And if I do this on behalf of my daughter, I just ask her soul for permission. If you are on your journey like I am, this will make sense. And if you are not there yet, I want to say trust and give it a go. And if it doesn't work, use the coin. But anyway, so this is it. So then I would ask a yes, no question and I started off with really simple things like shall I have meat or fish shall I turn left or right shall I swim in the indoor pool or the outdoor pool when I kept getting the answers and if I followed this outcome and when I bucked the system because we must see what happens if we buck the system I got a bucked result I'm telling you I got a bucked result it's a great way to find the answer Another way is to use the coin. I wish I had a coin with me, but I don't have a coin with me right now. But just take a coin, heads or tails, and it must be a yes, no question. So can I trust this piece of information? Can I trust myself? Can I trust this? But whatever it is, um, I'll go back to heads for fish, <laughs> tails for chicken, so to speak. But what you're looking for is that when you toss the coin, it's not the result you're looking at, but the resonance in your body. You're looking for the disappointment or the, ah. Oh. And if it's gone against, you'll still get this resonance because if it's gone for the answer, probably you thought you might like, then you're, um, you've got your confirmation. But what if you wanted something and the coin come up the other way and you looked at the coin and it come up the other way, just notice the energy. Everything is energy. We are all energy. I say this constantly. We are all energy. So if you can use the kinesiology or the coin, you will be able to move through this with more certainty. You'll be able to see things more clearly that resonates for you. I've passed this information on to people and they either pull me down and say, no, it doesn't make any sense because media says this or 
this book says that or this person says this it doesn't matter what they say it's what feels right for you and if you're doing something and you think it feels right for you you must check in with your well-being check in with your immune system check in with your heart love conquers all what are you going to let go of this month in order to make your immune system work better what are you going to let go of this month in order to live a better system are you prepared to be dictated to do you want your freedom because if we don't have freedom next year there will be chaos that chaos i mean five is the number of chaos but it's also the number of freedom but five needs to understand the four energy and create a constructive freedom we have been mind controlled i talk about the thoughts we've been mind controlled we're not good enough we're too fat we're too thin we're too short we're too tall we're uneducated too educated i've been told endless times that I'm to this or not enough that and it doesn't matter what way I turn I'm never ever right to anyone so it taught me a long time ago that you've got to be right to you you must be right to you that's what matters and if you carry on following a system because you've been told you need to step back and say does it feel right for me right now nine is the number of transformation how do you want to transform yourself how do you want to transform your life, your family? How do you want to transform humanity? If this is a natural or man-made pandemic, it's still natural because the natural energy force will always win no matter what. Have faith. Have trust in you. Use some of these tools I share in my videos. I know a number of you have written to me recently and I attempt to write back, but I'm challenged constantly, no matter how much I want to do. It's like every email I reply to bounces. So first of all, connect with me below the video. Let me know you're sending an email and I will find it. And if I have to send a reply back on a different email, I will just look out for me. I am there, I am connecting, it's just not working. Things get in your way when you're working up, when you're moving towards love and enlightenment, there will be challenges. It's easier to crash down, and I've crashed down so many times, as I've shared in past videos. I want to help you guys to elevate, to live in love, to be love, to absorb love, to embrace love, to overflow love, because love is the energy source you need right now. If you want to know more or understand more about numerology or go deeper, I do readings, consultations and mentorships. Mentorships are my favourite. I can't switch something in a reading. I can only give you so much in a consultation. And I am a believer that you can't deal with part of. You need to deal with the whole. You need to deal with the whole. Get in touch. Let's work at raising this vibration. Let's share my videos. Let's spread the love. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do push the bell for notifications. I know I'm a bit slow at the moment because of what's going on and mum being really sick and everything else, but just bear with me because I want to gift you this stuff. I really do. For now, nine is about letting go. Just let go and be and if it's the end of the world so be it but when you let go and be guess what you start to get the download you start to get the direction or the nudge and then you can take action this is a year to build the foundation sometimes we have to knock things down to rebuild next month is june it's one energy let's hope we're sowing new seeds of freedom thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Take care of yourselves, look after yourselves, and love yourself.